Hey, good morning. Yeah, haha, ha, 3D printing farm. Oh boy, a lot of fun. Biggest scare I think I have in 3D printing farm world is uh, what if the machines break down? Yeah. <laughs> and I've tried to build some redundancy in here by having, like, a, you know, if you follow me in the last few weeks, whatever, we picked this machine up. I did some, you know, repairs on it, got it working to the point where it's ready to run, but it's a backup. And it's only a backup in case the other machine breaks down. Which one does this replace? Well, none of these, obviously. This one uh, is a standby against our other main uh, boy there. That's the uh, longer LK5 Pro. And it went down uh, last week again and started having some really bizarre problems. And I'm going to show you the fix on that thing because uh, it turned into a bit of a interesting story going on there. And not unusual, but uh, the parts that fail generally on 3D printers, you know, they vary. And so I carry bucket loads of parts, but it's it's always like something always seems to break that, that somehow the machine knows, oh, he doesn't have a spare for this. So that's what I'm going to break this week on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at the longer LK5 Pro and I'll show you what happened to it. Uh -huh. Yeah, so this is the uh, longer LK5 Pro. Uh, this one's uh, in a, uh, we've actually built a shelf here in the back of a closet so we can like run it fully enclosed and control everything here. So <laughs> yeah, the, here's the problem though. The longer suddenly started shutting off in the mid print and just, you know, had trouble getting it going and it just started smelling like something was burning in there. Now here's the old switch here on the back of the, by the power supply. And if you take a quick look, it's real obvious. You can see what's going on here. You see that black right there on that second terminal in from the uh, right side there. I'll just see if I can get a good focus on that. Yeah, and what happened, that's burning up. And also the other end, which you can't see here, it's no longer used. I cleaned it up and reconnected to the new switch. And there's a couple things about this. The manufacturer or whoever, somebody figured out that this was going on. This is a jump, actually. And the jump is actually to take the hot here and jump it to the switch. And so it's kind of a weird, yeah, kind of a fascinating way to do things. Now, here's the replacement. And the replacement, which you can get on Amazon, but by the way, I will provide a link in the description below where you can find this switch. This is uh, a lot better, a lot bigger, a lot heavier. has much more heavy kind of a click noise to it compared to this one, which you can see, you can hear it. It just doesn't make any sound at all when I when I click it. Anyways, it obviously takes the same power cord, plugs in and whatever. But here's the difference. Take a look at the back of this one. All of a sudden, you've got nothing. All you, you don't have any jumpers. And the reason was the jumpers were actually burning up on the original switch with the longer LK5 Pro. And then obviously there was a problem. I really didn't like the wiring layout myself anyways, because it's, it looks kind of, I don't know, more sophisticated than what it needs to be. So let's take a quick look. Here's the switch now. When you flip it over, it's it's not that obvious maybe, but there, it's actually marked. Uh, this particular one is marked from Amazon, which is good. This is your ground. And then the one out here on the end here is what they call the neutral. This one here is the line or the black wire. Uh, this color here, the, the neutral on a 3D, 3D printing machine could be any color with the neutral. You never know what they're going to use. It's uh, just one. It's a, it's a thing. But with a line color, generally it's black. Uh, I would always, you know, maybe double, triple check before you switch wiring. But uh, the black wire should be your line wire to feed the machine. And obviously, like I said, it's a neutral. And now there's no more wiring to do or anything because your, your plug pushes in here. Everything else is going to be run off the back here. But also, like I said, uh, there's a couple of things that they did. They also uh, improved the uh, type of uh, fusing here they've got here. They've got a fuse cartridge here that's really hard to deal with. And this one, they made it a little bit larger. It still, you know, it still fits in the same hole and everything else and the same screws fit back in and whatever. But this is at the back of the machine. This is where you, you know, turn the machine on and off. And of course, if you're like me, you kind of want, you know, power, you know, up is on and down is off kind of thing. So of course, that's the way I arranged mine. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, longer LK5 Pro and any other printer out there that uses this type of configuration, you might want to take a quick look at that and just make sure everything's okay. I thought 
the power supply or even though we had an electronic board problem because all of a sudden mid-print we were shutting down and there was no reason for it or at least i didn't think there was any reason for it and then i suddenly realized there was a little you know puff of smoke or something coming out of the back of the switch here and i was like whoa wait a minute this is where all the trouble is and the other thing that was a giveaway and it's kind of again it's kind of hard you can't just you sort of can get it to click the switch itself felt kind of mushy when i was shutting it on and off and i thought you know what that it could be that's where there's where that's where the problem is and sure enough that's exactly where the problem was yeah so that was the uh, switch on the lk longer pro and i was glad i could troubleshoot it figure out where the problem was and quickly repair it so we could get back to work so the machine went back online and started manufacturing parts again for my uh needs for my 3d print farm but uh one of the points i wanted to make today was uh, if you decide to go into a 3D print farm uh, situation, you should be able to troubleshoot your machines and replace the parts, repair the parts, make you know whatever changes to the pieces you need to continue to use the machines. And the reason is uh, most 3D print farms like myself, we have uh, consumer grade printers right now. I don't have anything that's like wood. I uh, wouldn't classify any of these as being commercial grade. Maybe the SK-1 because it's all linear uh, rail bearings, which make to me is like really good. But I carry special grease just for those linear rails. Yeah, so that we can, you know, grease them up. But also I have parts such as, and I'll just pull this out of here. This is a, this is a belt kit for these belts right here. And this is the six millimeter, pretty much the standard belt on most of the printers. But again, I have an extra belt kit in case I need them. I have these little wheels for, well, in this case, this one here. And I think, yeah, the longer, same thing. It uses these little wheels for tracking. So uh, we carry, I carry a lot of new bearings and parts for that. Also, of course, lots of nozzles. And then down below here, I'll just pull this out from underneath the shelf. And this may look like filament in here because there is <laughs> some, you know, but... Also, I've got a spare extruders, uh, spare nozzles, and a lot of other spare parts, uh, a heater block, you know, uh, just in case something goes wrong. Also, have uh, even have spare probes here for the temperature probes that are needed for these because this stuff, uh, at the consumer grade at least, this stuff can or will break or fail. And the reason for that is when you're a 3D print farm, a lot of times, and these machines are quiet right now, but a lot of times these are running sometimes three and four days straight, you know, nonstop, just putting parts out for me for a little bit. And then we get a break, you know, and even when you have a break, you sort of don't because it's like, okay, we sort of re need to restock the shelves a little bit with some product. So we'll go ahead and schedule and say, you know what, let's, let's make some parts up and just check our inventory and see what, what we're low on for numbers and just put some more on the shelf for the store at that point. So you're running these machines a lot more than say a consumer would. And at the same time, you're also gonna have a lot more failures and you're gonna see problems crop up. So uh, if you're gonna get into 3D printing, you, bet, you know, at, at this level, you're gonna have to be able to troubleshoot, repair and replace parts, also tools. I'll put a link uh, in the description below uh, where you can find a good box of tools for 3D print machines because that's something uh, I have slowly discovered is there's a whole world of <laughs> nice kits for 3D printers that is all the tools you need for working on 3D printers. And some of the uh, tools they have are really well thought out. Also, it includes tools for like cleaning the model afterwards, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, just in general, I have a separate set of tools just for 3D printing. I have tools for my cars. I have tools for my woodworking stuff. Uh, but the 3D printers, I have a set of tools for those too. And they're specialized tools for working on this equipment. So it's just something, you know, it just you have to address it. But uh, the longer LK5 Pro problem this, uh, this past week, uh, last week and into the, this week was like, really brought uh, a head towards the idea that we really need to establish like you've got to be able to fix your stuff in order to keep going. Uh, I'm sure that if you had a hundred printers and you, you know, you're really busy or something, you could push the printer into the garbage can and just order another one. But uh, I'm not that kind of, I'm not scaled up like that. <laughs> you know, I have to be able to repair what I got and keep going. Uh, you know, we just don't have that kind of budget right now. I don't expect to ever have that budget, but you know, hey, it could happen. You know, <laughs> but, but that was something I wanted to cover. Uh, what's today? Thursday. Yeah. And just go over this with you because um, I think a lot of people when they first think about 3D print farming 
they think they just gonna they're just gonna throw a bunch of machines on shelves, run them, make some parts, and you know sell them to whatever clients they have, and you know that's it. You just walk away and hey, it's all taken care of. It's all done. Uh uh no. You're, you're stepping into the next uh, stage of 3D printing where you're going to have to be able to do a lot of uh, in-home, in-house uh, repairs. And, uh, you, you know, the best thing, of course, is to stock, which is I do. I have numbers of bins here, and the, I stock parts for each of my printers and backup parts, uh, fans, extruders, uh, you know, all the nozzles and different size nozzles in case there is a problem. <laughs> And you could shake your head and say, oh, well, this will never break. Yeah, they, they break, you know, stuff wears out. Even my bearings, uh, some of these bearings get kind of noisy at some point, and you're like, okay, I've got to change the bearing out, you know. Uh, another thing I would, wanted to do was, uh, I should probably post a, a link on there for you. There's a website where you can get just hardware for 3D printing, including these aluminum extruded frames. Uh, if you're going to build a boron or something maybe, but I'll put a link on the hardware store up there for you where I source some hardware. Really great prices right now. Uh, once the tariffs and things get settled in coming up, I have a funny feeling these prices are going to really skyrocket on us all. But at this time, you can source up parts from like the hardware online and get pieces that you need as well. Or build something from scratch, you know which is what somebody should have done. Well, maybe that's what they did here. I, uh, this is not a CR-10, okay? Get over it. <laughs> Stop typing. <laughs> this isn't even close to a CR-10. A CR-10 would be a huge upgrade compared to this thing. This thing is, uh, I think it's the IKEA of 3D printers. I have never seen so many different pieces and there's so many things that are still wrong with this printer that I have been unable to uh, correct because we're gonna ha it requires a lot more engineering to decide or determine how we're going to do it. Uh, I've even looked at a possible uh, core, you know, XYZ core uh, frame and change this into that in order to establish a better 3D printer out of it. But we are getting what we need out of it, so it's like, good enough, we'll call it a day. Yeah. Hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the notice bell, and uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> Over and out.